Hello, vinyl community. It's time for another quick and dirty video. So, um, on our vacation, you know, I, I had hopes of, of hitting up a, a couple record stores, um, but I wasn't going to press the matter because, you know, uh, <laughs> we were celebrating our, our uh, 10th anniversary. Uh, I'm very excited about that. Um, so, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't going to press the matter, like, you know, if we had time, cool, if not, eh. Uh, but towards the end of our, uh, vacation, uh, the wife mentioned, oh, we should, we should go to a record store. Um, so, uh, late the other day, uh, we, we hit up, um, Record City, um, upon the, uh, recommendation of squid lover uh thanks again i i thanked you in my previous video but i'll thank you again <laughs> um i just wish i had more time to spend there um i wasn't able to spend a lot of time just about an hour um so um i feel more comfortable spending about two hours in a record store i think after two hours you know you you pretty much have a, a good feel of what's there and what you want. Um, so, because I wasn't able to spend a lot of time at that record store, um, yesterday when we when we got back, um, I decided to hit up my sort of go-to record store, which is Mad Platter. Um, they have the best hours um, out of any record store I've seen. Um, yeah, they open at 10, they close at 9. Um, they're open seven days a week. Yeah. Anyway, we've got to keep this a quick and dirty video. So, uh, I found some great stuff there. I spent about a couple hours there. So, I, I did a deep dig, uh, focusing on sort of the miscellaneous used records, like miscellaneous A, miscellaneous B, and so on. Just dug through those sections rather than looking through, you know, the more, uh... Uh, common um, artists that you would find there. Anyway, let's get to this. Uh, I have about, uh, six, I don't know, six or seven records here. So, the first one. Uh, this is a Maynard Ferguson Primal Scream. Uh, this is from 1976, and by my account, it's his 40th album. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... He's he's kind of known as the screaming trumpeter. He's from Canada, um, basically a, a band leader that got his start with uh, Stan Kenton before uh, going on to um, do solo work. Uh, does kind of hard bop, jazz pop, uh, crossover jazz, um, and this one, um, all music. Uh, only give it three stars. But what sold me on it is apparently this album mixes, you know, sort of the jazz sounds um, with disco and, and funk. So that should be interesting. Plus, look at that cover. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, man. All right, this one I'm, I'm pretty excited about. Um, it's, it's what some would call virgin vinyl. Um... Yes, and as you see here, even though it was sold used, um, it's still sealed. So, very excited about that. Uh, this um, he, He's more famous as a songwriter. In fact, I, I'm going to rattle off some of the uh, people he's written for. Uh, Conway Twitty, Stan Kenton, to connect him with the previous artist. Um, Tennessee Ernie Ford, Her, Herb Alpert. John Conley, Waylon Jennings, Gary Newman, Neil Diamond, uh, uh, Gloria Gaynor. He wrote the song I Will Survive, apparently. Very famous song. Uh, yes, and the strangest of all, Ice-T. Interesting. But he is, is most famous for... Um, uh, most famous for the song Chevy Van... And then also uh, Early Morning Love apparently was a hit. So, uh, And this is on a label I've never heard of, General Recording Corporation, GRC. 
Uh, let's see, this, um, uh, basically album rock, AM pop, soft rock. Um, the little samples I heard reminded me a, a little bit of Donovan, a little bit. And this is his debut album from 1975. All right, <laughs> this one is very interesting. I bought this on the cover alone, but I did a little research. Um, this is Classics Nouveau, um, self-titled. Uh, basically, I mean, you can kind of tell by the cover. It's it's um, new wave, yeah. So, with, with my little bit of research, I you know I confirmed that it was new wave, but you can kind of tell just by looking at the cover. Uh, so this is from 1981. Um, it could be their debut album, although they did release um, Night People that same year. Um, yeah, so basically it's it's considered new wave, new romantic. Not sure what what new romantic is exactly as as it relates to new wave, but um, but there you go. So that's that's very cool. Again, I bought this strictly on the cover. This is an artist you definitely, you definitely uh, see in the vinyl community. Um, Adrian Ballou. Uh, this is Twang Bar King. Uh, let's see. I have my notes here. Uh, basically, he's a guitar virtuoso. Um, most famous for his work in King Crimson, The Bears, and Tom Tom Club. Uh, this particular album comes from 1983. His second album... All music gives it four stars. Uh, basically, it's it's uh, album rock, experimental rock. Very cool. I was pretty excited to find that. <clears throat> All right, now this one, the <laughs> it's kind of uh, I I didn't realize it was this badly split on the on the spine there. I'm going to have to do some work on it. But needless to say, I'm still very excited about this. This is this is an an interesting band. Um they're uh, prog rock and British folk. Um what really sets them apart is they they use instruments um from like medieval times to Elizabethan times. So it's, they're using like, you know, historical instruments and they kind of pattern their songs from those time periods too. So this is their fourth album from 1972. All music gives it uh, four and a half stars. I definitely need to pick up their, uh, more of their stuff, but Amazing Blondell with their album England. A couple more. Hopefully I can keep this a quick and dirty video. Very, very excited about this. The Icicle Works. Yes. So, uh, again, New Wave. Uh, also a little bit of Neo, Psychedelia, and Post Punk. Uh, this is their de debut album from 1984. Four and a half stars on all music. And I also have this on cassette. So I was thrilled to find this on vinyl for five bucks. Nice. And last and certainly not least, I've se I've seen this recently in the vinyl community. Um, it has members from Deep Purple and Johnny Winter's band, as well as uh, Lee Dorman, the bass player of Iron Butterfly, one of my other favorite bands. Um... Basically, hard rock, prog rock. Um, this is their first of, of three albums from 1972, and allmusic.com gives it four and a half stars, so it's, be, it's supposed to be very, very good. Whew! Kept it under ten minutes. How about that? <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.